Hello everyone and welcome to this video on hyperintention logics. My name is Beatrice Bonaguidi and I am a graduate student at King's College London. My main research interests concern the foundations of mathematics and symbolic logic. I am currently working on a research project on the possibility of constructing a naive set theory on the hyperintentional logic hype developed by Lightgeb in 2019. Um, I am going to say a few words about the motivation for this research project and this will then merge into the topic of today's video. Um, May set theory is meant to be um, an abstraction or um, an axiomatization of an intuitive and undesigned conception of set, which is the conception of set we get from natural language, meaning that a set is simply a collection of objects that are grouped together by a predicate um, that is intentionally. However, um, sets are also defined extensionally, um, that is with respect to their members. So two sets are identical by the principle of extensionality, if and only if they have the same members. Um, this clash between the two notions of intentionally and extensionally formed collection brings to um, paradox, at least in classical logic, which means that um, our very liberal principle of naive comprehension that we get in naive set theory leads us to inconsistent entities. For instance, um, we get Russell's paradox. Um, Every attempt to revive naive set theory without resorting to a modification of the naive comprehension principle in set theory needs to be based on a certain type of non-classical logic. And so far, all attempts have been quite unsuccessful uh, simply because non-classical logics seem to lack the mathematical strength that is needed to generate a naive set theory which is as strong as a classical set of C-type set theory with a restricted comprehension. Uh, I am trying to suggest that the logic hype, being hyperintentional, uh, could be a good solution to this problem, meaning that a naive set theory based on hype could be mathematically strong while still being based on intuitive principles. And this leads to the topic of today. I am going to talk you through a brief introduction to hyperintentionality and I'm going to highlight some of the main features of hyperintentional logics, focusing on hype. Okay, so let's start. First of all, to get clear on what hyperintentional logics are, we must introduce the concept of hyperintentionality. Hyperintentionality is roughly speaking simply a refinement of the notion of modality. It is easily introduced by highlighting the distinction between extensional, intentional and hyperintentional context. By extension, in this case, we simply mean truth value. In an extensional context, exchanging two arbitrary sentences with the same truth value, that is the same extension, leaves the construction invariant. Standard classical logic and classical semantics creates an extensional context. By intention, on the contrary, we mean truth value in the same set of possible worlds. So two sentences that have the same intention have the same truth value in the same possible worlds. And um, in an intentional context, uh, exchanging two arbitrary sentences with the same intention leaves the construction invariant. Um, classical modal semantics, for instance, generates intentional contexts. Uh, we define a context to be hyperintentional if it is not even intentional, which means that 
if we um, exchange two sentences which have the same intention or the same extension in a hyperintentional context, these are not equivalent. Therefore, substitution of necessarily equivalence does not hold salva veritate in hyperintentional contexts. Let's clarify this notion a bit. Um, as I said, we can define hyperintentional context, context and concepts as concepts that do not support substitution or necessarily equivalent salva veritate. We can see this quite clear, clearly with an example. Um, if you take a look at the two sentences at um, the top of our slide, we have Clark and his Superman and Clark and his Superman and Sarah is from London or not from London. These two sentences have the same extension, so they have the same truth value. This is simply because Sarah is from London or not from London is a tautology of the form A or not A. So um, the conjunction of any sentence to a tautology preserves the truth value of that sentence. Um, however, they also have the same intention because they're clearly true at all possible, all the same possible worlds. Um, in, in this case, all the worlds in which Clark Kent and Superman are the same person. This is again because Sarah is from London or not from London is a tautology. Uh, so these two sentences should be equivalent salva veritate, but if we place them in a hyperintentional context, uh, which means if we add the hyperintentional concept of belief to them, they're not insubstitutable anymore. Uh, consider the sentence below, Jimmy believes that Clark Kent is Superman and Jimmy believes that Clark Kent is Superman and that Sarah is from London or not from London. These two sentences are clearly not intersubstitutable. This is uh, very plainly because Jimmy may not have any belief regarding Sarah and so uh, he does not have a belief um, that Sarah is from London or not from London. Hyperintentional operators um, capture thus logical asymmetries, uh, believing, knowing, seeing, and even the concept of because, the concept of causation. Um, and generally, hyperintentional concepts, concepts capture more fine-grained notions than simple extension and intentions. Uh, Hyperintentional contexts are nicely then captured by a semantics which includes both possible and impossible worlds. We define impossible worlds as worlds which do not be behave classically, that is, in which some truths of logic or metaphysics fail. If we, for instance, refer to the example of the previous slide with concern belief, we can see that uh, impossible worlds may be seen as states of information um, which model the, um, the action of normal agents, so not perfect epistemic agent or agents which may have contrasting beliefs or incomplete beliefs. Um, and this state, these states of knowledge are well captured by worlds that may be gappy or blotty. In the case of gappy worlds, there are sentences which do not receive truth value and which may be interpreted as gaps of information. Whereas in glutty worlds, we have some information clash which may happen for non-perfectly uh, rational, perfect epistemic, perfect epistemic agents. And so we have um, beliefs or knowledge states of the form A or not A. We are then led, uh, if we want to model these beliefs or knowledge, or knowledge state, to incomplete or inconsistent worlds. There are ways could be or not, ways things could be or could not be. 
And precisely the aim of hyperintentional logics is to capture these hyperintentional contexts. We turn now to describing an example of a hyperintentional logic, that is hype, uh, which, as I mentioned before, was uh, developed by Hannes Leitgeb in 2019. Although there are many hyperintentional logics, with one of the first mentions of the concept of hyperintentional logic dating back to 1975 with Cresswell, hype is a particularly nice hyperintentional logic. And this is because it is construed in a general fashion rather than um, modeling a, a specific hyperintentional operator. Instead, it is based on an impossible world semantics with a specific, a specific accessibility relation between worlds that mimics a hyperintentional operator. Um, as noted by Lightgib, and I think this quote quite uh, aptly captures the spirit of hype. Hyperintentions are simply intentions under a question. We must note, however, that hype is properly hyperintentional only in relation of classic in relation to classical logics. This is because hype is a non-classical logic, and it features a condition which is uh, mainly intuitionistic in nature and a negation which does not beha behave classically, but which is um, constructed via a Rowley star semantics. So. Um, classical or rather sentences which should be classically necessarily equivalent are not intersubstitutable in hype whereas um, sentences which are indeed necessarily equivalent in hype are intersubstitutable in hype and this is a very striking and important feature of the hype logic um, which makes it uh, pretty advantageous um, because relative to its own semantics uh, and to its own logic, hype is simply an intentional logic, so a logic with um, possible worlds. Um, this is simply and rather intuitively because the impossible worlds that we have in the eye of semantics are impossible only from the point of view of classical logic. Um, saying a bit more about hype semantics. Hype semantics takes inspiration from both situation semantics and non-normal or impossible word semantics for systems of non-classical logic and non-normal model logic. What that this, does this mean? That we have both classically possible and classically impossible worlds in um, a state space. And these worlds um, capture or embody what we interpret as states of information. Um, these worlds are linked by the hype conditional, which is defined across states of worlds. So we uh, interpret the hype conditional as a sort of meta theoretic conditional which links. Um, different situations. So the notion of entailment that we have in hype uh, is directly intentional. Um, the hype conditional furthermore is constructed as a sort of intuitionistic conditional so it does not uh, satisfy excluded middle but it also does not satisfy uh, the law of non-contradiction. So it's a pretty liberal, liberal conditional. Uh, this is to accommodate the existence of both possible and impossible worlds. However, the hype conditional is quite strong compared to other non-classical counterparts, and this is what makes hype a good framework, mathematically speaking. Um, more precisely, a hype model is based, or well, a version of hype models are based on a frame um, where the first element is a domain W, which is just a set of states or worlds, both, both possible and impossible. Then we have an ordering relation on states that um, 
specifies an accessibility relation between these. And then we have the Rapley star operator, which is uh, an operator which identifies the dual of a state. And um, while the dual of a classical state is simply itself, if we have a non-classically behaving state, its dual um, makes paracomplete states become paraconsistent and vice versa. Um, I'm not going to dig any deeper in the semantics of hype, but you are more than welcome to go check for yourself the article written by LightGap, which is a very, very good article. Um, these gappy and glotty states and the hype conditional both justify the fact that necessarily equivalence in classical logics may not be substitutable. And this is sort of a technicality that I'm not going to explain any further, but that is um, graspable from the structure of the semantics. Then, um, just a brief overview of the advantages of hype as a logic. Hype is stronger than most non-classical logics because of its intuitionistic conditional and because of the possibility of locally retaining classically valid inferences. This happens because since our conditional is defined across states and sort of meta-theoretic, um, if we have conditional free statements and uh, we have a classical state, Basically, classical logic is still valid. So we may have big portions of um, hype where um, classically valid inferences and um, classical logic still holds. This enables us to achieve quite a significant mathematical strength. Secondly, and more, philosoph more philosophically, uh, hype presents us with a good framework to model fine-grained hyperintentional notions. And this is because we can create pretty liberal hype models uh, with any hyperintentional situation we may want to model. So hype is a very good framework for modeling incomplete states of knowledge, for modeling belief, um, and also sorts of epistemic or deontic uh, logics. Then also we may note that um, the hype conditional is pretty natural as a notion of entailment and also the hype negation seems quite natural. And for those who are sympathetic to the fact that uh, the classical conditional and the classical negation do not quite accurately capture the um, the structure of entailment and negation as it should be, hype might sound um, nice. Uh, secondly, I am going to review a few applications. Uh, in a quote by Nolan, the 21st century has seen a hyperintentional revolution, meaning that the notion of hyperintentionality is all the rage now, and uh, hype in general. Uh, is being applied to many, many things. And I will mention application in truth theory. Um, using hype to model truth theory allows us to um, construct a non-classical truth theory with classical strength. Then applications in set theory, which is what I'm currently trying to do now. And as I mentioned before, hype is very useful in modeling knowledge and belief in epistemic logics. And here is a brief overview of the main sources and references that you may consult uh, if you want to learn more about hype intentionality and about hype. Uh, once again, thank you for listening to this video and I hope this gave you some food for thought. Thank you.